All right, so hey, what's up, guys? Got the face cam enabled today. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, I don't use this thing very often, obviously, but that's because it's like on my fucking screen, right? So if I want to click something that's under my face, I have to like move this thing over here and then over here and then whatever. So I'm just going to have it in for the first portion of this video. So obviously, from the title above up there, this is the second portion of my crash course, quote unquote, where I break down GVG. I've actually recorded the other parts of this video already. I just want to do a generalized intro and give some general tips that I think can just be beneficial to everybody before we dive into the real meat and potatoes of this. This is actually, um, like I've rewatched these other portions of the video and I think there's a lot to learn from this if you don't know a lot of this stuff already. I actually um, leak some very toss tech at the end when I'm going through your guys' questions. Turns out there is one. See what 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 did I say about having to move this fucking camera? There's one unit that solves a lot of your guys' problems, and I talk about it why in the latter portion of the video. But don't just skip to the end. Come on, watch the entire thing. Um, I'd appreciate it. I put a lot of effort into this, more effort than I normally do. I've been recording and re-recording for hours now. So, just want to let you guys know that, and you can see it in my face. I'm telling the truth. So, just for some generalized tips, I think the biggest thing with GVG is really communication. You guys got to communicate with each other. If your guild's not in Discord, you need to try and get into Discord. It's just very beneficial to everybody to be in Discord. If your guild does everything in this GVG chat here, or not GVG, but, you know, guild chat here, there's not much you can do. Like, you eventually lose chat. You notice how my guild, we don't talk in here at all. Everything is done in Discord. If there's constant talking going on in here, you can't go through and look at everyone's gear that they rolled. You can't see what MLs they pulled. So... My biggest advice is get get your guild in the Discord. Take info, use info, take screenshots of the CR bar, you know, do that. Run a really big tip I can give a lot of you guys is save some gold for GVG. And you'll see why in the later portion of this video. Regearing units for particular fights is really important. Stat tuning is really important. I, I say that in titles of my videos all the time. Just stat tuning is very important. Sorry if you feel like I'm rambling right now, but yeah, oh well. So let me grab this list over here and make sure I have all of this. So yeah, I talked about communication, take info. Um, the next thing is like expect bad RNG. If you lose, you lose. Shit happens sometimes. There's not much you can really do about it. Shit happens. Um, as you can see, what the fuck is this? Let's auto this guy while I'm talking. So, another big tip I can give is if you know you can't beat this comp, don't attack it. Go attack someone else. That's one of the best tips that you could take. Like, there, there's some people that we fight, and I'm like, yeah, I, I can't beat this guy, so I'm going to go attack some random tower somewhere because I'm just going to get screwed by this team. So, why even try? Go attack somebody else. It's nicer on your record. You win more. It's, it's, it's awesome, actually. So, that's that. And you just got to understand AI mechanics is the last thing I want to talk about here. And by what I mean by that is attack priority. Like, it'll target what's not invincible first. If everything's invincible, it'll still target the weak element. If... It's weak element, it'll go for that. If there's two of the weak element, it'll go for the one with higher percentage or lower percentage health. If they're both at 100%, it'll be random. And then that's really it. Like if it's a neutral, neutral element going in, it'll, it'll go for the one with least HP or it'll be random. Like that's really understanding that is really helpful when doing everything. But that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I kind of have a little checklist I do just to make sure I have enough gold. There's You eventually want to get two rods of Amaryllis. You want a diverse unit pool. You want to mole your units. 
you want to build bait units, you want a good amount of healers because it's nice to have options. You know what I mean? So, do your specialty changes. It's really important. You'll see why here in a minute. Clurry is good. Montmorency is good. Lorena is very viable. So you, you guys can be successful with free plus 15 units. Like, that wasn't around before. Watch how hard this kin hits. With greater attack buff. Look at that shit. Damn. That was some damage. Alright. Let's go to the next part. Okay, so I don't have a, I don't have a Ruel. So Doris is cosplaying Ruel right now. I would use Destina, but then it wouldn't be a light color. I want you guys to see the colors. So the defensive comp we're looking at right here is MLK and Assassin Kali Ruel. We don't have any prior info, right? So to safely attack this, first thing you want to do is identify the threats on the team. So obviously, the two threats here are Assassin Kali and ML Ken. They do single damage aside from Ken's AoE, a Kali stealths, unless she's debuffed. It. And I've learned that yesterday. So. The first thing you want to do is remove that damage threat. I mean, if, if you're not trying to outspeed, this is this is your typical GVG here. This is how everyone should be doing GVG unless they can outspeed and cleave. I'm not going to talk about outspeed and cleave because I don't even do that. So I'm not the person to teach you about it. If you can outspeed and kill everything, then outspeed and kill everything. But in a well-built comp, it's hard to cleave it. So like, for instance, this one. So first thing we want to make sure is that their damage is coming somewhere. So here's our boy Kiki Rat, ready to soak up all their damage. So the next thing you want to identify, that since you've identified what their damage is, you need to look at their win condition. So obviously their win condition is, you can't kill Ruel. She's too big. You can't outheal the damage coming out of ML Ken and Assassin Kali. The win condition is you kill everything, you get stuck fighting Ken. There's several win conditions on this team, making it very good. So what you have to do is find your highest percentage play to give you a win condition while removing their win conditions at the same time. So basically to do that, going falling right back. So obviously against this, we're going to need a good amount of sustain because both of those units are just going to be funneling in the Kiki Rat constantly. They're going to be getting Dust Devil procs and whatever else. There's the potential of defense break landing. Potential dual attacks, but I don't really consider those. So you need to make sure you have healing. You're tanking it. Don't, don't just bring three DPS in to fight a team when you don't have to. It's just not the smart play. So what we're going to do is... Like I said earlier, I would say bring, bring Lorena here, but there's always a risk of, because Ruel is going to be attacking, attacking Lorena the entire time, and there's a risk of a dual attack procking off Ruel onto your Lorena. But we're still going to use her as an example. So we'll throw Lorena in here. She's got decent damage. The risk here is, Killing ML Ken. Can you kill ML Ken with this? Probably not. So it's probably not a good play. So let's take her back out. Let's put Lorena in here. Not Lorena, uh, Montmorency. Everyone has Montmorency, right? She's got good sustain as long as you have Rod. So we got these two things covered. Now we got to find our win condition. We got to make sure we can kill these fucking things. So you need a unit that can kill them. Not everyone has a unit that can kill, and that's what you have to accept. A lot of people have SSB. SSB is actually a pretty good pick into this. Because you're not necessarily forced to attack, attack Ken. Everything's going to funnel right into Kiki Rat. Kiki Rat will counter Assassin Kali, will counter ML Ken, do consistent damage to them. Ken can't counter off of a counter. SSB will continually hit Ken, and eventually, SSB is going to put out too much damage for Ruel to keep healing. 
So as long as your mom rancy you can keep up this Kiki rat, you're going to win eventually. If they just drastically outgear you and your gear is shit, you're probably still going to lose. That's just the reality of it. But on an even playing field, or even like a, their gear is a little bit best, better than yours, you, you still have the advantage because you get to attack what you want to attack. So basically, you just sit here with SSB and smack the shit out of our cosplayed Ruel here until she dies, meanwhile countering the other two units. All right, here's the second team we have to prep for. It's a team that everybody loves. I love it too, trust me. So we're going to deal with it a way that I don't. I just bring Euphine into this shit. If you have Euphine, bring Euphine into this shit. So we're, we're going to do a free-to-play option on how to deal with this. And you, you guys are about to be mind-blown here. So, right here, we have our girl, Falconer Clurry. So, just like before, we're going to identify, like, we're going to look at the team comp. What's the win condition of this team comp? Well, it's not going to wall you. It's win condition is you don't do enough damage to consistently get through these barriers. You get fucked by counters. You get fucked by Elbrus that Charles one-shots you. You get defense broken. There, there's a lot of win conditions to this team. A lot of win conditions to this team. So basically what I recommend bringing here, free-to-play option. You have... Clurry to start out with. I believe Montmorency was in the other team, correct? So what you'll do here... I hope whoever's watching this has Angelica. <laughs> like, if you don't have Angelica, it's, it feels bad. But we're going to use Angelica here as our secondary healer. Just because her healing output's really good. Anything about what? It, wait a minute. There's there's a Charles there. He he's gonna destroy that Angelica. No, chill, Just chill. And then our last unit is gonna be our girl. There she is. Boom. See, this team has the same concept as mine. So basically, their win condition is they fuck you, right? So we gotta stop that win condition. Basically, what we have to do, we have to remove some of this damage off of that team as quick as possible. That's what we have to do. That's our win condition. To do that, you gotta remove Charles or SSB. Ideally, Charles is the better target. Mainly in this circumstance, because Charles Prox Elbrus, usually, and Elbrus is a hell of a lot more scary than SSB's S2. Okay, so what you got to do is, like, stat tuning in this fight is very important, more so than the first one. So our win condition is, ideally, we want that FCC to go first, and then we want Clurry to strip the Charles. You lose the 15%. Sometimes that just happens. It sucks when it does, but if you have no other win condition, or no other way you can win, you have 85% chance to win this. So basically, you strip Charles, you taunt Charles. Hopefully before he goes, it really depends. It'd be nice to go into this if you already had info, you already knew their speeds. Going back to taking info, sharing info, using the info before you attack stuff. So let someone stronger hit this for you, that way you know what the speed tuning is like, what the damage is like, and etc. So our win condition is, we let the FCC go, skill nullify gets put up, then we want to tune, speed tune our units to where our Clurry goes, and then our Angelica goes, and then our Lorena goes. Ideally, Lorena can go before Angelica, but you're, you're going to want them all decently fast, because you're going to want to, I think you're going to want to cut the SSB with Angelica for sure in this situation just to avoid getting hit with unhealable and unbuffable and all that shit. You want your Angelica to go before that SSB. If you can't guarantee that, then you need to make sure you have immunity on your units. It's the only alternative. Um, you won't necessarily need immunity on Clurry because she's going to go first. Ideally, you can outspeed FC, or, uh, SSB with her. 
But if you outspeed that FCC, she's still going to go and get skill null. So you need to make sure your speed can correct. I would say maybe a safe spot for Clurry going up against this would be like 180 to 190 speed. Usually FCCs are faster than that. That's about a sweet spot, I think. Maybe 195 because usually they're pushing into the two low 200s. But there like, are some as slow as 190. So I would probably like 185 to 190 to be safe on Clurry. Make sure she's tanky. That way you can cut. Charles might go first. Might still cut you. But there's a good chance SSB isn't in that speed range. Um, if she's faster, rip. But that's why I said make, try to get info before you attack something like this with, with a comp that's this risky. Let someone with a D Corv or something go first. You know what I mean? So, Charles is the kill target, so you got to land that defense, defense break on Charles, and then you basically delete him with Lorena. If your Lorena is decent guild, geared, and full molad, and full skill enhanced, she should be able to kill a Charles that's defense broken pretty easily. And then once you remove that threat, you get to deal with the SSB. It does get a little sus. That's where stat tuning comes in again. You need to make sure your Lorena can take some hits. She's going to have to take some hits, especially if this FCC is on Elbrus. If FCC is on Elbrus and you're, running, you're sitting over here with an 800, 900 defense, Commander Lorena, she's going to die. You're just going to get RNG'd. You're going to get SSB countered into an SSB attack because there's no way to force this SSB into any of your units. So you need to make sure your, your Lorena's got some bulk and she's topped off to where she doesn't get focused. Because once you taunt Charles, you taunt Charles, and that's it. So this is where you got to manage your aggro through the Arius. With all the AoE coming out of the SSB, it should keep um, FCC on top of Clurry here. And then there's a good chance your Angelica is going to be tankier than your Lorena. A very good chance. So you need to bulk her up. I would probably say like 1,300 defense range. You know, good amount of health. Good amount of damage. Speed really doesn't matter as much. As long as you're getting that immunity up before they go, you should be okay. It'd be nice if Charles goes and then your Angelica goes so you can get the heal off and then SSB goes. If you could manage your speed tuning that way. And you delete the Charles and you just go from there. Know what I mean? It's pretty straightforward. It's a way that you can deal with the comp generally free to play. You're going to need some good gear. But I think if you have some decent bulky gear on Lorena, paired with like Adventurer's Path stuff, you should be able to beat this comp if their gear is on the same level as you. Don't go in here with Wiven gear on your, your Lorena with 800 defense and expect to win because SSB is going to kill you in S3, S2. So you're, you're going to die where stat tuning comes in. Stat tuning is important. Hopefully, you guys kind of get what I was talking about here. So, from this point, we had our round one set up. We have our round two set up. And this is where you would go into the hero tab. Or you would go into the equip tab here. See what gear you're missing, whatever. Make sure you have all the right artifacts on everything. But you would go in the hero tab. You would go in that equipment manager. Use the damage calculator if you need to to make sure you can survive a couple of hits. See how hard they hit you for in comparison to like how much HP you have. And then go from there. And that's how I do offense. The entire process. I set up my teams. If I need to calc damage, I will calc damage. If I need to know how much HP I need to survive a Dark Corvus, I'll make sure I have that HP. I won't just go in and pray for the best. I don't do that anymore. And I, I lose a lot less because I stat tune for every fight now. Sometimes I get RNG'd. It's, it's okay. It, I get salty, but whatever. It's part of the game. I guess it kind of keeps it interesting a little bit. But stat tuning, it's a lot more important than people think. Yeah, it costs gold. That's why I said in my checklist, have some gold set aside for GBG if you want to do better. If you don't really care, you don't really care. But... It's actually a really important aspect to winning. If you just go in with half-ass gear, you're going to get a half-ass fight. 
and you're going to get a half ass loss. <laughs> like, so it's the best advice I can give is really stat tuning. So to break that down real quick, you know, just break down the enemy team. See if you can identify their win condition. Try to remove that win condition. Make your own win condition. Go for the higher percentage play. Stat tune. It's really how I go about doing offense. So, yeah. Okay, so we're here in my community post. I was going to do this in game, but I think it's just easier if I go through here so people can actually see their questions in the video and know what I'm talking about. So I kind of did Charles SCC SSB free to play option in the video. It's like in, in the previous part. So I'm just going to skip over that. Um, I just don't think you should cleave that team at all unless you're doing a bizarre Taiwan cleave or something. Um, just going ox lots into cleaver into that team is really sus. I, I don't recommend doing it unless you have like C Dom as well to guarantee you kill off some threats, but it's very risky to cleave that team. And I would only cleave it with, like, Basar. If you're going to remove all the barriers and then defense break and cleave. I think that's the best, best way. Um, need better gear. Yeah, the gap is getting big. There's just really nothing we could do about it right now. Um, I did talk about alternatives a little bit, but I'll keep that in mind while I'm down here, too. Uh, mention the minimum stats. If here is used on offense, it's kind of hard to do that, man. To just, like, give you a stat line for units. The best thing I can recommend is use the damage calculator. If you just search Epic 7 damage calculator in Google, you can see how much damage every unit does with what kind of stats. And then you just plug in the value of whatever defense is on your unit there. If it kills you, then you should probably up your defense and your health a little bit. It's the best advice I can give there. Revivers... Like, generally, that's what I'm seeing a lot of people having trouble with is revive stuff. Basically, all ML5s. RB, Charles FCC, SSB, a lot of FCC, A Ravi, Ruel, ML Kin. Basically, people are having issues with the strongest units in the game, which makes sense, right? I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I can't give you a free to a free to play solution to beat a full ML5 team. There's some that you can do it against. But like I'll go through some of these for example. Um so like for example here, Fat Cat, Ruel, Arbiter. No extinction units or revivers myself, not sure how to approach these. Like if you have Dizzy, you can possibly Dizzy that team. It really just depends. With the consistent AoE there, Ruel can't, can't outheal AoE. She's going to revive. She's going to have her cooldowns. But if she doesn't have a lot of resistance, you can lock her down. And I'm going to let you on, in on a secret. If you have Earth Armin, pair her with Dizzy, and then you can 100% stun lock with her special equipment. Some people might get mad at me that I just leaked that, but my if you watch my video, I don't mind sharing some tech with you. Um, don't share it with anybody else. You just refer them to the video, okay? Refer them here. Let them hear it from me. I share it with you guys. I'm not sharing it with people that don't watch. So, pair Crimson, not Crimson Armin, pair Garmin, Green Armin, because she has a 100% stun chance on stuff that's debuffed. There's your, uh, so if you have Dizzy, there's there's a way to deal with a lot of revived teams. Green, green Armin. Um, hybrid wall DPS comps. FCC SSB MLK and Ruli. So, again, another Ruel. And you know what you can do to this team as well? What I just said. Dizzy, Armin. Stunlock things, debuff them the shit. If the Ruel has resist, it makes it a little bit harder, but Silver Blade or whatever the fuck her name is, Araminta, isn't in the meta right now. She's nowhere to be found. You don't see very many Ruels with high resist, and it's pretty easy to build a Dizzy over 100 resist where you can lock down the entire team. Just wait for the immunity to fall off, 
pop S2, debuff them to shit, run Tag of Hells if you have to, but ideally. Like against this, you'd want to run like, if you have Abyssal, if F FCC is there, it's good to run Ielus to dispel the barriers. It helps with your damage. If there's no FCC there, run Abyssal Crown, run Sirin. Helps with damage mitigation, helps with CC. That, I'm, I'm leaking some stuff here, guys. So if you made it this long into the video, talk about how to beat Avildred and SSB. Dizzy and Armin. <laughs> Stunlock stuff, pretty much. If you don't have Dizzy, it makes it a little bit more difficult. I really hope some of you guys have Armin. Just start building Armin. Okay, ML Ken, ML Vildred are my biggest problem. They do so much damage. It's usually a risky fight. If, and if there's a rulie, I can't go self-tanky approach because I'll lag damage. Um, Dizzy, Armin. If the Ruel doesn't have high resist, you just unlock everything until it all dies. There you go. <laughs> like, MLK and comps because I don't have a light bait. Um, Dizzy, Armin. Depending on what the other stuff is, if there's green unit on the other team, it becomes a little sus. But Dizzy, Armin. Pretty much. Revive comps are a problem. Basically, A. Vildred, Ruel, and Chloe. Dizzy Armin. <laughs> oh, fuck. I, I need to build Armin just so I can show you guys how she works. Because a lot of people on top in GVG are using her to beat a lot of these cancer teams. Evade comps. Dizzy. Like, Dizzy is, is the epitome of offense, guys. There's a reason she was number one. On my consider this unit when you're building your defense. Literally every single one of you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm not hating on you guys. I'm just dizzy on offense is ridiculous. I granted, yes, some of you guys may not have dizzy, but I think a lot of you guys have at least been playing since the collab and have dizzy. A lot of people have that bitch. User. If you want to invest some Mola into her, it's not a bad idea. You, you, but she can get the job done with just a cooldown. In her S3. She doesn't need anything else. She can kill everything. Max out a Seer Rin if you have Abyssal Crown. Level it up. Stunlock the shit out of these teams that you guys are having trouble with. CC the shit out of them. Ruel only has one cleanse. It's not a big deal. Um, Counterattack teams paired with Ruli. Try to one-shot one of them. So, like, I'm guessing another ML Ken Ruli team. Dizzy. Dizzy the shit. Just dizzy it. <laughs> like, dizzy everything. I bring this why you guys see me use dizzy so much in offense. Anything with MLK. Dizzy. Use dizzy. Revive comps. See, this one like, caught me a little bit by interest because Ruel, A, Ravi, FCC is really tanky, but honestly, you can dizzy that shit too. You can dizzy that. You can SSB that. This is, this is why dizzy and SSB are just number one and number two when I said consider these units. That's why a lot of these top guilds in GVG, they use green units on defense because Dizzy and SSB dismantle a lot of these ML teams. Just, just those two. And if you pair green Armin with Dizzy, a lot of these ML teams are free wins. And that's a pretty free-to-play option as long as you have Dizzy. So what I really recommend to a lot of you guys that are struggling here if, if Green Armin pops up in the Mystic Pool, you need to pull your ass off and get her. Save up until she's in there. She's real relevant. She's great. Um, I, I've just got to build her and show you guys. Um, I don't mind sharing things with my community. Um, I'm sure there's several other people in top yields that use Green Armin, but she's not really meta. People don't understand how good she is. She takes a couple molas, but she will fix a lot of your guys' problems. Fallen CC. Um, she's just annoying, man. She doesn't do anything but give everything barriers. But like I said, Dizzy just shuts her down. If In a Charles SSB situation, FCC isn't really the problem. Charles is. You just got to get rid of Charles. FCC on her own doesn't do much, right? The problem is that she protects other things. You just got to make sure you have enough damage to get through those other things. Um, thoughts on building Ravi? Um, don't fall into the HP trap. Pair her with something that buffs attack, gives her attack buff, give her a little bit more attack, get really high crit damage. Don't get trapped by HP. Um, Charles, Chaos Inquisitor, Elbrus, that's actually a really good team that I would love to try. As for a way to deal with it, I can't really tell you because I haven't came across it. The one that we came across, there was a 
portrait on the Charles, which made this comp significantly better. So like what that team wants to do, right? You want to kill Ruel or they just keep, she keeps reviving shit, right? But they're both on Elbrus. And while you're trying to kill the Ruel, they're smacking the shit out of you. So basically I would try to load that team up with debuffs. To be honest, because Ruel can't, she's not great at cleansing. And if she's on potion, she's going to be easy to kill. So if you can mitigate some of the damage coming out of them with attack down or hit down or something like that, like people like it's people say it's risky to bring Dizzy into Charles, but you can do it. I've done it before. And yeah, Elbrus is going to be going off like crazy. But if you can keep those debuffs up, debuff the shit out of them, keep provokes up with other units, then you might have a little bit better setup. And for fast bikins. You could literally, if you build Tanor Royal Guard and bring that fucker in there, Biken will kill herself. Let's make him tanky. If you're bringing Crow, then your Crow's just not tanky enough. Make sure he has immunity. That way you don't get a detonate. And he should survive. Ruel comps. ML Cannon the Muni, Dizzy Armin. Like a lot a lot of you guys that are having trouble in GVG will really benefit from just building green Armin. And um, I guess if you made it this far in the video, I don't know how long this shit is. It's probably really long. But let me know in the comments. I'll build Armin if enough people want me to do it. And I'll show you guys how good she is. So, yeah.